Hi guys, welcome back. So as we wait for this tournament to start, I'm gonna have a look at all the pools. I'm gonna have a look at the big games, some tight turnarounds, I'm gonna look at some targets, and I'm gonna make some predictions. Um, so straight into pool A, Ireland, Scotland, Japan, Samoa, and Russia. So this is an exciting pool because it's the pool of the hosts. Uh, and the nations can be very excited to see Japan do well. And they'll think they've got a chance, certainly. First of all, though, what I've got to do is put up the um, warm-up games of Russia and Samoa, because you'll have seen all the warm-ups and me talking about the 11 contenders in my previous video. So very quickly, uh, Russia had a good result against Namibia, 20-0 win there, but then a massive loss against Italy, and it indicates that they are going to struggle you know, quite a lot, even though they're an exciting team, and I urge you to back them, because they're going to give it their all, but it's going to be super tough. Samoa, well they beat Tonga, but then they lost the likes of USA in Fiji, so that's kind of where I see them sitting, although they did have a promising loss, if there is such a thing, to Australia. 34-15, a pretty good showing, so, you know, so-so for them. Okay, let's look at the schedule now. And I like looking at schedules because I want to see when the big games are, and also I'm quite interested to see who has the tight turnarounds. Now, often in this tournament, um, you know, tournaments like this, it's the small teams that have a real tough time with a tight turnaround because no games are easy. And the big teams, well, they tend to get given their four-day turnarounds when they've got uh, two easy games or potentially one easier game building into a big game. They rarely get two big games with four days in between. Is that right? Should it just be luck? Obviously, what they want is they want the teams to be fresh so they get more viewing figures and, and make more money, etc. But is that right? Um, so straight away, Japan-Russia is the start. Japan definitely had a say in the schedule of the order of this running, so I've heard. And they chose to open with Russia, which means they want to start fast. Uh, they want to get that win and they want to build into that island game, you know, that big island game for them. Which is fair enough if you're allowed to do it, I guess, but is it fair? Discuss below. Um, so yeah, then we go into the first big game in that second game, Ireland v Scotland, straight in. Huge game for both teams, because whoever loses that game against Japan then just becomes absolutely massive. So I see three big games here, so Ireland-Scotland, then Japan-Ireland, Japan-Scotland, it's going to be a real fight. Hopefully Japan put up a great show and they'll feel like they can win one of those games for sure. And if you look at, say, one of the, the four-day turnarounds for one of the bigger sides, Scotland play Russia, then four days later they play uh, Japan, but they could easily rest a lot of players for that Russia game. So it's certainly a lot easier in that respect for some of these bigger sides. OK, I'm going to bring up now the past form of all these teams in previous World Cups. And I'm only including, as I normally do in my videos, the World Cups in the what I would call the modern professional era, era starting from 99. You know, obviously, if you want to look at um, results further back than that, you can, but that's the way I'm doing it. Um, and I'm also going to set some targets. Now, these targets aren't kind of their top end targets, these are the boring targets, if you like, that the suits in the boardrooms will set the coach and then a few months when all the excitement's died down, they'll say, yes, you hit your target, um, you can stay on as coach if that's what they want to do. It's kind of that minimum performance target that teams don't really talk about because it doesn't you know, sound very motivational, very exciting, but I'm going to set those realistic targets and see what you think. So straight in, Ireland and Scotland uh, both have only ever been to the quarterfinal as their highest position. Um, the quarterfinal with the Stars, they're just those old school quarterfinal playoff games to get into a quarterfinal, I believe. Um, so really straight away, even though both those sides will have bigger aspirations, Ireland would certainly think they can get to a final and win the thing, I think that suits target, that minimum target that they need to be achieving is a semi-final. And they'd make history for the country if they made that semi-final in the modern era. So that's actually quite big, even disappointing if they, say, lose in that semi. But of course, standing in their way, if they get through the pool, is going to be New Zealand and or South Africa. Um, and that's going to be really tough. You know, is it harsh to say if they get into that sort of quarter, that's their final? Um, let me know what you think. Right, on to Japan, the hosts. They've been an ever-present in the modern era, but not getting out of their pools. 
Obviously last year they got that huge win against South Africa which fires imaginations but it also makes teams take them more seriously and, and they're a very serious proposition. And they'll see this as their big chance for sure. They've got a good team, they've been together for a long time, they've got some good results behind them and they're at home. Um, and they're a very proud nation and they, you know, they run on emotion um, and their target's quarterfinal. Get out of this group, get to a quarterfinal, make history. Then on to the, the other two, we've got Russia, who haven't qualified very much for this tournament, only played in 2011 in the modern era, and probably their target was actually to qualify for the World Cup, so maybe they've achieved it already. Uh, but the Bears, as they're known, you can tell from the badge, um, well, they play an exciting brand of rugby. So I think their target in this World Cup is to play that brand of rugby, score some great tries, and then celebrate when they score those tries. Because maybe they've achieved what they, you know, were set out to do anyway, which is qualify. Okay, finally Samoa. They got into that quarterfinal playoff, which maybe doesn't quite count as a quarterfinal. Then they haven't got out of their pool since. And it's a seriously tough group to get out of their pool. I'm not sure they can do it, to be honest. You know, they should beat Russia, but then they essentially have three finals to play. It might be too much. Um, their target, I would say, is to beat Russia and one other. Okay, finally, on to the prediction. As you might have guessed from some of this, some of these won't be a surprise. Uh, but I am going to go for Ireland to win that pool. I do think they've got the extra quality there. We've seen signs of them getting back to their best. Um, they've got a... a a quite a basic game plan but when they do it really really well it's almost impossible to stop. Um, Scotland and Japan could be close but I think if Scotland play their A game and Japan play their A game I do think Scotland are slightly better. Japan have a great chance but I, I would predict them coming third. Then Samoa I think well beating Russia um, and Russia into fifth. So that's how I see it going. Those are my thoughts on the pool. Comment below, let me know what you think, and until next time, I will see you then.